Growing edible and medicinal mushrooms at home is becoming a really popular trend and for a good reason. But is it safe to grow mushrooms at home indoors? For example, is it safe to grow them inside of your bedroom? In today's video, we're going to be talking about some of the lesser known hazards associated with growing mushrooms at home and what you can do to mitigate against them so mushrooms are helping your health and not harming it. Oh, but first, my name's Chris. I run chrisoutdoors.ca and we do education, consulting and courses, helping people learn about the natural world and also build their self-reliance skills and their preparedness in a quickly changing world. We also have an in-depth online course on how to grow mushrooms at home, both indoors and out, as well as how to ID them in the wild and mushroom ecology. So you can check that out in the link in the description or just go to themushroomcourse.com. Now though, it's time to talk about mushroom safety. Now, just like getting out of bed in the morning comes with risks and then getting into a vehicle and driving somewhere increases those risks, there are a handful of risks associated with growing mushrooms uh, and even more risks associated with wild foraging mushrooms. Now, the first thing I just wanna say is a small number of people do actually have allergies to mushrooms and they can even be anaphylactic. So if you've never eaten an oyster mushroom before um, or not really eaten many mushrooms at all, I just want to put that on your radar and you can choose what you want to do with that. Number two is the fact that mushrooms are spore producing. So when mushrooms are finished kind of colonizing their, uh, their host and they create this fruit, this fruit releases these spores out into the air. The spores spread through the air looking for new hosts to colonize them. Now there's spores all over the place out in the wild. If you walk through the forest ever, uh, you've probably breathed in spores before. Uh, you can even get mushroom spores indoors in houses. I live in the countryside and we keep our windows open a lot in the uh, summertime. So I guarantee you, I breathe in the odd spore here or there, even inside of my house. Uh, if you have molds inside of your house or fungi inside your house, which is more common than um, a lot of people realize, then you could be br uh, breathing in spores from those as well. Breathing in quantity of spores and specific types of spores is definitely not good for us. Um, particularly, uh, there's a wild mushroom called puffball, and there's a, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but there's actually a pretty serious ailment that people can get if they breathe in quantities of puffball uh, spores, and they can end up in the hospital, even with long-term uh, chronic issues from breathing in puffball spores. But all mushroom spores are not things we want to breathe, breathe in in any kind of quantity. Uh, and as I say that, I don't want to scare you. Know that you've been breathing them in your whole life. It's inevitable. You can't go through the world without breathing in some spores unless you're wearing a mask everywhere you go 24-7. Our bodies have things built in place to deal with the small amounts of toxins um, and things that we ingest into our body. But if you're going to grow mushrooms, uh, depending on how you do it, uh, there are ways that you might increase the likelihood of you um, taking in more spores. So let's chat a little bit about what you can do to mitigate that risk. Uh, I'm basically going to just lay out what I know. Now, I'm not an absolute expert on this. I'm not a doctor. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I've known. Uh, I'm going to share a few links where you can do some of your own research, and I'm going to leave it up to you as a responsible adult to make the choice about how you want to mitigate the risks with your growing situation. First, I'll chat about the easier one. So I mostly grow outdoors. That's my favorite way to grow. And I really don't worry about it at all personally when I'm growing outdoors. Now, quick little trick, when you harvest your mushrooms and you bring them in, if you're gonna put them into your fridge or bring them into your house, put them inside a sealed bag. Cause something that can actually happen, if you just bring them in in a big tub and leave them on your counter or in their fridge, mushrooms can actually continue to release spores even after they've been harvested. What we want to avoid is large concentrations inside of us. And especially if you have asthma or any allergies, um, then this becomes extra important. So when you harvest your mushrooms, put them inside of a paper bag or some sort of bag to put them in the fridge. That way, if they release spores in your fridge, you don't open the door and have a big poop of spores spreading through your house. So there's one little trick for just on the harvest. Now, the one that's more important, I think, for us to talk about, or I shouldn't say more important, but I think where the risk uh, increases is when we tar start talking about growing indoors in confined spaces where we don't have the same ventilation that we have outdoors. So let's chat a little bit about where those risks concentrate and what you can maybe do to mitigate against them. Now with indoor growing, I've tried to do as much research as I can around this to try and figure out what the, what the real risks are. And unfortunately, there's no real clear line of where too much is. Uh, I haven't been able to find it. And what I'm realizing is I think it really comes down to the person. Uh, some people are more susceptible than others to various types of allergies. If you ingest spores in your lungs, um, 
One, just having a lot in your lungs starts to clog things up, but two, your body creates a response to that and builds antigens. And as those antigens be build up over time, uh, it can create an allergic reaction. And the more you're exposed to it, the worse that allergic reaction can actually get. And it is possible to turn into long-term chronic health problems if you breathe in a lot of spores. Now, most of the stories that I've heard through my own research are people that are actually working in commercial mushroom operations and they're being exposed to spores uh, day after day, week after week. Here's something that might be interesting to know. All kinds of companies sell these grow at home mushroom kits. They don't have, come with warning labels. They're meant to be grown right inside your house. They don't tell you anything about the spores with them. And I've reached out to a number of these mushroom companies and I've asked them and I've speak, spoken with numerous people that grow mushrooms. And the general consensus that people say is that, well, it's such a small amount coming off here that it's a real low risk uh, that someone's actually going to react. And there's ways you can mitigate that risk. The main one being that you harvest the mushrooms before the spores get released. So when uh, this mushroom here is probably just about to release its spores, basically when the cap uh, kind of gets nice and wide and that that end of the, the edge of it starts to furl open or wider, like when the top of the cap starts to go flat, that's usually when they start to release their spores. So if you harvest, if you want to play on the safe side, harvest your mushrooms when they're a little bit smaller than this. Um, so harvest them when the, the cap is still kind of curled over a little bit, and hopefully you'll be able to get them before the spore releases. And of course you get them before the spores, it significantly mitigates the risk there. The second way we can mitigate the risk is to just think about the quantity. So I would never grow more than a tub or two indoors uh, without doing something to ventilate. And you may want to decide that actually you're not even comfortable with that. So you're just not going to grow indoors without ventilation. You're only going to grow outdoors or you're going to set up ventilation. That's your own choice as an adult. But what's unclear is exactly where does that risk point happen? And I think it's quantity and it's time. Another thing that we can do to mitigate risk though, if we're going to grow indoors is don't grow inside of the living areas that you spend the most amount of time in. Um, so if you're going to grow, let's say on coffee grounds, or you're going to get a kit, you know, you could have it in your kitchen beside your sink where you're in there, you know, maybe for a couple hour, an hour in the morning, or probably not even, you know, maybe in there 20 minutes in the morning, you're in there an hour at night, um, but you're not sleeping there. You're not sitting there for hours at a time. Um, you could grow these in your bathroom. Again, you're in and out of that space. Maybe don't grow them in your bedroom where you're sleeping there for eight hours every single night, breathing in. So if there is spore release, you're going to breathe a lot more in. So the next mitigation you can do is just not store them in a main living space. A few other options I'll just throw out there. So one option I have here is I actually grow in this thing called a monotub here. Um, and inside of this, I have a controlled humidity environment and I grow two bags at a time. So the risk of the spores here is pretty low to begin with. But by being inside of this tub, even if they release the spores, well, they're, they're inside of the tub, they're not floating around my home. So when I go to go into my monotub, if they're fruiting, one thing is I could put on an N95 mask or a, a proper respirator and then open this up so that um, if I am breathing in a little bit of spore, I'm more protected when I do it. Now, I see people growing these all the time and tend them without masks. Just saying, you know, um, if you go on the internet and do a, a search for uh, mushroom farm pictures, you'll see all kinds of pictures of people walking around these fruiting rooms with a lot more mushrooms. Many of them aren't wearing masks. I'm not at all recommending that. I would be wearing a mask in one of those. When I'm harvesting them out of here and they're fruiting, I prefer to wear a mask. I, I go on the safety, safety first side. If you wanted to take it up even another notch, you could have this going indoors. And when you want to go check on it, actually just take it outside. So walk out on your balcony, walk outside and open it outside. So you're not releasing any spores in your house, wear your mask, uh, do your harvest, do your work, put it back on, bring it back in. Now, the third thing I just want to bring up, and again, I don't worry about this at all in my house um, because I live in a fairly dry spot. But just know that if you live like in a coastal environment or in a, an area where it's really, really moist and you already deal with mold issues, maybe if you've even had mushrooms growing in your walls and stuff before, just keep in mind that by allowing these spores to go off in the house, it's probably unlikely that they're going to actually be able to colonize anything in your house. But I want to say unlikely, not impossible. Uh, I did once have um, a bucket that I was growing that had holes in the bottom and I had it sitting on a concrete floor down in my root cellar. Um, and the mycelium actually started growing across the concrete. Now, as soon as I took the bucket away, it lost its moisture source, which was the straw in the bucket, and it just dried up and died. But if I had not taken that away and it had connection to the moisture source and that mycelium made it over to the wood. So, you know, just know that, you know, by introducing mycelium to your home, uh, if it's very moist already, if you already deal with mold problems, you are introducing more spores into that environment. 
So these are all factors I think to consider. You know, the safest way is just to grow outside or to limit the amount uh, and to wear masks when you harvest. But uh, again, uh, look through the additional resources that I've provided here and make your own decisions. I'd like to extend you a special offer to join the Mushroom Course. Inside this course, I'll be taking my 20 years of experience in being a modern day homesteader and a forager, and I'll be sharing how to grow an abundance of mushrooms at home, whether you live in the city or in the country, and even if you have limited time and space. So if this is of interest to you, I invite you to check out the course, uh, themushroomcourse.com, and enter the code YouTube30 for $30 off.